Hi everyone and welcome back to the first episode of a new series. I'm always struggling to create more content faster, but the tests I make require a lot of time and planning, even if everything goes according to plan, and it usually doesn't. I was thinking for some time to create shorter episodes with more on-point information in which I can test random stuff, including your comment ideas. These episodes will be called For Your Curiosity, or FYC for short, and you can easily spot this in the video title. So, in order to keep this video format short, let's get to the point. I guess everyone experienced a dead battery situation, which can be unpleasant to say the least. Fortunately, there are some solutions. 1. Jumper cables, 2. High capacity power packs or super capacitors, and 3. Just push the car. <laughs> well, pushing the car is not really recommended, as some things can get damaged and it's not suitable for every situation. Jumper cables require that another car is nearby and willing to help you, and this leaves power packs and super capacitors. And today we'll take a look at super capacitors, which in my opinion have a big advantage. We'll go over the advantages and disadvantages of this system and we'll perform a test on a dead battery to see if it can start the car. Let's get going. From other tests performed on similar products, I noticed that lithium-ion power packs can provide longer engine cranking times. The disadvantages of these lithium-ion power packs is that over time they can lose power, so you always need to maintain them charged, and they need a long charging time. A lithium power pack has a capacity above 10,000 milliamps, and they can take up to 8 hours to charge. On the other hand, we have supercapacitors, which work a bit differently. This can be charged from your dead battery to start the car and doesn't require long charging time. It can be left discharged and can be used when needed. Here's how it works. The supercapacitor power pack from Autowit can be charged in three ways, using the 12 volt power outlet of your car, or it can be charged from a wall charger or directly from your car battery. What I find to be very useful is that it can be charged even if the battery is completely dead. And I mean really, really dead. If the voltage in the car battery falls below 12 volts, that car will not start. The super caps can charge even if the voltage drops to 5 volts. Now, if we connect the supercapacitors to the dead battery, you can see that it starts charging immediately. And it usually takes around 2 minutes to fully charge, depending on the battery voltage. Once fully charged, the clamps can be connected to the battery terminals, and pressing the small power button starts a 10 second countdown. When it reaches zero, you can hear a continuous sound, letting you know that the power pack is discharging 800 amps in your battery and you can start the car. Sounds fantastic, now I have the perfect car to test it on. This car was not started for a few months. Surely, the battery is dead. So I got another battery from the recycling center, but this is in very bad condition. The battery analyzer tells me that it's actually damaged. At least we'll have an extreme situation to test the supercaps. If it manages to start this cold diesel car with a damaged battery, I guess it can start any car. Wow, very impressive. It actually did it. This device can discharge 800 amps for 3 to 4 seconds until it runs out of juice. This is just enough to start the car, but it cannot sustain long cranking time. Now let's see if it actually discharges 800 amps as it says, at room temperature and then at very low temperatures, after which we'll take a look inside. So I replaced the damaged battery with a good one, which I discharged to 8.85 volts before performing these tests. Without the auto with power pack, the cranking amps are 521 amps. When this battery was new, it should have had 900 cranking amps. Now let's try with the jump starter. 824 amps. Wow, <laughs> I haven't expected such a good result. Good job, auto with. Now let's throw it in the freezer and the battery as well. After a few hours, the supercapacitors were at minus 27 degrees Celsius and the battery is at minus 10 degrees. Without the jump starter, we have 529 cranking amps. With the jump starter, we have 795 amps, just a 3.5% decrease. So there you have it, a great tool everyone can use with a lot of potential. In my opinion, this supercapacitor jump starter from Autowit 
has a lot of advantages. It's fairly light and compact and it comes with a hard protective case. You can forget about it in your car and it only takes a few minutes to fully charge and it can start your car when you need it. As it uses supercapacitors, this can be charged and discharged hundreds or thousands of times with no problems. Now the disadvantages I came across. One is the short cranking time. If you have a car that requires long cranking to start, this may not do it. It can only crank for 3 or 4 seconds. Second, starting diesel engines may not work for higher displacement engines. Diesel engines also require a lot of current for the glow plugs, which can drain the capacitors before you can start the engine. Furthermore, these also have higher compression. And the third disadvantage is the price, but for what it can offer, it's not much. If you're interested in something like this, you can find the link in the description. This is an affiliate link, so if you buy this product from this link, you can also support me with no extra cost to you. That's all I have for you today. Thanks a lot for watching. Let me know what you think about this short format in the comments and also tell me if you use similar products and your experience with them. As always, come and follow me on social media where I post updates and stuff I'm working on. If you like what I do, please consider subscribing and supporting the channel on Patreon. This allows me to make more content sooner and better. It's a win-win situation. I wish you a great day. Bye-bye.